Hello there. Today we're going to make a new ring, which is going to be made out of brass, as you can see here. I've got a 4mm sheet, sheet of brass, and we're going to put some cubic zirconia stones in them. And I'll just show how to do that, and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, mark a center hole for the ring, and... We'll just do that right now. No, it doesn't need to be very deep punch, just so this thing doesn't slide off. And now I've actually got this to the right size for my fingers. And I'm just going to make the inner scribe line for the ring. And that, of course, really depends on your ring size. Alright, there it is. Okay, so I've got the outer diameter dialed in here. And actually the outer diameter has to be just a little bit thicker than the stone. The height of the stone, actually, not the diameter. Because, of course, when we drill the hole for the stone, we don't actually want to punch through to the inner diameter of the, of the ring. So we need just a little bit of meat there. So it actually... No, it doesn't go through there. I'll just scribe in the outer diameter of the ring. And a little fun fact, this is actually not how you would usually uh, make a ring. Uh, usually you'd make a kind of wire and then bend it to shape and solder it. But of course, brass is quite cheap and we can afford to actually do that and lose a little bit of uh, material. Because if you imagine this being gold, you'd lose so much gold that it wouldn't be you know, viable to do it that way. But with brass we can do it. Now on a little bit of better lighting, you can actually see the scrub lines here. And what we'll have to do is to drill a hole in here. And after that, after we've got this hole cut out, we'll cut out the outer shape. And then the next steps really de depend on what you what kind of tools you have. You know, you could of course just use files for the whole thing, which is actually a thing I've shown in a previous video, but I'm gonna use the lathe. All right, so let's drill this hole. Okay. And now actually because uh, I've used these scrap lines, this hole is now perfectly in the center. And we can actually um, use a step drill like this to actually widen that hole. So we don't have to use a coping saw. But of course you can use a coping saw. It really depends on what kind of tools you got. All right, let's do this. Oh yeah, uh, I've actually clamped this sheet down a little bit so it doesn't make too much of a racket. Oh yeah, okay. So step drills really require a lot of talk and this machine really isn't you know made for this kind of shenanigans. All right. Now that yeah, you, know, you can discuss whether it actually worked well, but as you can see the hole is pretty good. Okay, so I guess I know why this poor little drill press talked out on me. I wasn't actually cutting all brass, I was cutting the table. Wow. Okay, so I've actually used a file and a hacksaw and a coping saw to get this, you know, very rough ring shape out of the material. And now you can, of course, just go on with a file and make this really round. And of course, you know, use some round files to get the inner diameter just right for your finger. And, you know, you'd be done and would never use a lathe. But I've actually got a lathe and I've got this nifty little fixture here, which I made in the previous video. And I can just 
put it on here, tighten the screw, and the jaws will expand just a little bit and hold this ring firmly. Now let's go over to the lathe, shall we? Oh yeah, okay, so this should hold this ring in the lathe. As you can see, I didn't actually bother to make it extremely round. So we'll do that right now. Just a little bit to go. After turning, the outside is pretty round. As you can see, it's not actually to final dimension. I'll do that later. And now I'll have to turn the inner diameter here to the correct size. And then I'll just polish it or sand it at least and polish it and then we're gonna finish the OD. Okay, so now I'll have to turn the inside diameter to the correct diameter. I've actually marked this on my ring steel here. As you can see, there's still just a little bit to go and we will do that using this inside turning tool. So the next step after getting this diameter just right is uh, to sand it. And of course you have to start with a coarser grid, which is in this case is two, uh, 320. And I'll stop sanding uh, with 2000 grit. And after that I'll go right to polishing. Alright, so let's get it started. And you can say that I'm kind of doing this motion while sanding and I'm using my, you know, soft finger as a background or as a, you know, surface to press this onto. And this kind of creates a convex surface, which is, you know, a little bit rounded. And that's all a bit uh, nicer to wear because it doesn't have any sharp edges or, you know, 90 degrees angles. Okay, that should be nice. Now I'll just have to increase the grid until I get to 2000. See you then. Alright, yeah, that's quite a nice sanding finish here. And now I'll have to get some polishing paste and some paper towels to get the surface where it needs to be. So I'll start polishing now and yeah, just a little tip, actually there are different kinds of polishing paste. This one is actually, as the Germans on you can read there, just for uh, gold, silver, brass and copper. So it's suitable for this material. Alright, let's do this. So I just apply a little dab of this polishing paste to the paper. That's actually already kind of too much. And just start up the lathe. This is the kind of surface finish you can expect from polishing brass. It's really nice, as you can see. And now I have to do the outside, get this to the right diameter, and polish it just like we did the ID. Oh yeah, another thing I have forgot to mention is that of course I'm polishing these, these faces as well. So that all the faces but the outer face are polished. So I've got the ring back into the ring vise and all the surfaces are polished but of course the outer surface is not so we'll have to turn that to the correct diameter and polish it. Right, so I've got this turned down 
And now it starts sending. Okay, so I've got the ring polished and turned to size. Actually, I haven't got this uh, removed from the vise because I will now put some stones in it. And here's the pattern I'm going to use it. I'm going to use uh, one 3mm stone and four 1mm stones, which are spaced apart just about 5mm. And here are the stones. These are cubic zirconia. I'm sure many of you actually know these. They are very similar to diamonds. Very, very similar refractive uh, index. So it's quite hard to actually uh, know whether it's a diamond or zirconia stone. The way I'm going to put the stones in there is I'm going to glue these. No, it's not really the way you would do this traditionally, but I'm not actually good at setting these you know, traditionally, so I'm just going to glue these. Now, if, before I can drill the holes, I'll have to scribe the hole locations on here. They, of course, have to be in the middle, and they have to be spaced apart 5 millimeters. So I've got uh, the compass for that. Okay, so I'm going to use the compass to get these exactly five millimeters apart from each other. Okay, so the first drill, or the first drill operation, is going to be the 3mm center stone. And yeah, I've actually clamped it down in here and used a different kind of drill to actually get this higher precision in there. Okay, now the holes are drilled. Sorry for not getting any footage of that, but it's really hard to do these really, really fine tasks and film at the same time because, you know, it gets cramped in the space and it's really hard to focus. So I skipped uh, filming this. And as you can s probably see, it's not perfectly on center. So the big stone is not perfectly in the middle between these two smaller stones. Now a professional would probably just remelt this ring and start over, but I've got the luxury of not having to sell this ring, so I'm just going to roll with it. And you may be wondering why I'm actually not holding it with my fingers. It's because if you touch brass, it... Uh, changes color pretty fast so we'll have to so we'll actually have to get some lacquer on there and this is actually going to be the next step okay the next next step will be to get some lacquer on there that's a pawn lacquer as you can see and what this does is just uh, protects the surface from corroding or from changing color when you touch it your skin which you know is bound to happen on a ring so we have to get some of this lacquer on there okay so first things first I've got this kind of brush thing I've made there's just some uh, foil some plastic foil uh, because I won't don't want to use any uh, brushes with hairs on them because the hairs can fall off the brush and embed themselves into the lacquer which ruins the surface, of course. Now, the second thing I have to show you is how I'm going to do this. Um, this is a little bit unconventional, but I think it will work. I've glued this little holding stick here into the big hole for the big stone. And 
and this way I can actually put on the lacquer on every surface so it's a more uh, conform coating a bit more uniform and then after I'm finished with this I can remove this uh, this whole thing here this holding piece and drill out the glue uh, remove the glue by drilling and then everything should be fine All right let's get started All right, now it's definitely not perfect. Well, that's what I get from focusing too much on the camera uh, rather than the actual task at hand. But it's acceptable, I'd say. So we'll just let that dry and I'll see you then. All right, so one day has passed and the lacquer is fully cured, as you can see. It's really hard to tell that there's anything on there and now it's not a problem to actually touch the brass because there's this coating uh, that's protecting it and now what we'll have to do is just this no um, this glue actually doesn't bond to brass that well so it's actually possible to pull that out and now I just have to drill out this very carefully just I, so I don't uh, scratch up the surface and then we'll glue in the stones. Alright, now I am going to put just a little bit of glue into this hole for the big stone. Not any real um, jeweler would be insulted in this way because you would never actually glue a stone in, you would set it but I'm actually not able to do that I haven't learned it yet so I will do this way and should be fine right, the glue is in there and now I have to get the stone in there Hmm. All right, that should be to make sure that it's actually straight in there. Oh, yeah, that's oh, no, that's not straight. Okay, now that's perfect. And now I'll have to repeat that for the smaller stones. Alright, now there it is. You can see the stones are in there. But I think the smaller stones don't really uh, come up on camera. You can't really see them that well. You know, the lighting isn't perfect for this kind of stuff. Um, but I think it's nice. It turned out pretty. Um, yeah, gluing them in isn't really ideal, but you know, it's the easiest way. Yeah, let me know what you think of this ring, and if you've got questions on how to make this or other process, you know, just leave a comment. Alright, that's it. Have a great day, and see you.